Our case today heats up as we investigate the mystery behind this object. It all started with a call to our anonymous hotline. I heard that fire screens were used back in the old days to keep wax makeup from melting off women's faces. Let's take a look at the crime scene and the evidence. Here's the crime scene. We can see the object in question, evidence number one, placed near the fire. This agrees with number two, paintings and drawings from the time period, in which we see fire screens placed near a fire or even between a person and the fire. Now let's talk to a witness. Do you recognize this object? It's a fire screen. Can you tell me when it was made? It was made in its uh, two, two time periods. Uh, the wooden part, the stand part, was made between 1800 and 1810, and the needlework part, or the, the screen, was made between 1830 and 1850. And what was it made out of? The wood part is made out of mahogany, and the screen is, the needlework screen is made out of textile, um, wool, silk, and linen. Can you describe how this object was used? Yes, this object was used to screen yourself from the direct heat from a fire from heat from a fireplace. Uh, so, is it adjustable? Yes, it is. The screen itself uh, moves up and down on the pole, and then you can adjust it with a little screw at the back, which for, for whichever height you want it to be at. Who would have used it then? Very well-off people had these. Um, they, they're kind of rare in America, in American household inventories. Uh, you see them a lot more often in England and in France. Well, thank you very much for your time. You've been very helpful. So the fire screen was associated with fires and keeping the heat of them off of your face. But what about the makeup aspect of this claim? Let's turn to more evidence. Evidence number three, recipes from the time period. There were recipes for making cosmetics published in books and handwritten in journals. A study of several sources reveals that some do include wax, usually beeswax, but it is always mixed with other ingredients. For example, this red lip salve from a book published in London in 1779. Here we have reproduced the lip salve and compared it to modern lipstick. The textures are remarkably similar. Wax represents a small percentage of the product by weight and acts as a thickener. I am not aware of anyone, then or now, who is worried about their lipstick melting off their face. Mm. Nice. Evidence number four. There is a complete lack of evidence for the practice of spreading pure beeswax on one's face. No primary source refers to it. For insight into why, let's turn to our forensics lab. What can you tell us about pure beeswax? Well, the melting point of beeswax is about 63 degrees Celsius or 145 degrees Fahrenheit. That means it would give you a third degree burn in about five seconds of having liquid beeswax on your face. It is possible, though, to put soft, pure beeswax on your face. It's not, not melted, but it's still soft, um, and then it would harden. So, um, so can you tell us what would happen if you did that and the beeswax hardened but then the air temperature got so hot that it started melting off your face again. Well, the highest air temperature ever recorded was 134 degrees Fahrenheit in Death Valley. That means if the air temperature around you is high enough to actually melt the beeswax off your face, it probably means you're standing in a literal fire. Our conclusion. All the evidence points to fire screens being used to keep the heat of the fire off your face in a decorative way but only for the comfort of the rich, not because of any melting wax makeup. We declare this claim to be false. Case closed.